Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Georgia. So today I'm doing a reaction to Bill Burr. I found one called Losing Your Shit, Marriage, etc, etc. So yeah, um, might as well just swing on into it. So let's get on with the video. Off this shit. So I've been trying to learn, uh, learn how to fix shit around the house. That's what's filling up all this time of just being sober. <laughs> That's brutal, dude. You have no idea how long a year is until you're stone sober. That's <laughs> oh, fucking brutal. So I'm learning how to fix shit, right? My girlfriend doesn't like it because she says I have a temper. You know? <laughs> She's like, you know, it's just not that you're trying to fix things. It's that you get frustrated, you punch the wall, the dog starts shaking. I just don't think it's a good idea. No, that reminds me right. Not that I get hugely frustrated when I'm like fixing things or anything, but when I'm at home, it's fine when things are broken because like my dad will just fix all the stuff in the house. Do you know what I mean? Like if anything is broken in the house, lo and behold, my dad knows how to fix it. Right, so none of us have ever needed to worry. And then if he doesn't know how to fix it, I have a brother who can fix it. But now that I'm in uni and stuff and I'm like, have to fix things myself. Sometimes I'm just like, when things are broken or I don't know how to do something, I'm like, what do I do about this? I don't know what to do, I've never had to have this responsibility. And then I try and fix it myself and it all goes wrong. And then I'm like, yeah, so I kind of get the frustration a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, that's what that just made me think of. The wall, the dog starts shaking. I just don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> you know, you're a comedian, you should tell jokes. He's a plumber, he should plumb, right? <laughs> Trying to explain to her that losing your shit is part of the process of fixing something. <laughs> right? Everybody does that. You buy, right? Yeah. You buy something at Ikea, you get halfway through putting it together, you're like, dude, where the fuck is the fucking... Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. But, honey, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. <laughs> Why? You want to put it together? You want to, well, then you put it together. You put together this fucking particle board piece of fucking shit. These instructions make no sense. I will buy another one. I will buy another one. I'll buy fucking five and smash four if I want to. You don't tell me what to do. Oh, go to your mother's. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, what story are you going to tell? This one, right? Not the part about how I pay all the fucking bills, right? <laughs> how was that uncalled for? How was that uncalled for? I wasn't even talking to you. I was talking to the fucking thing. I was talking to the fucking <laughs> yeah. thing. I know what I said. I know. No, but I guess you never get the frustration until you're in the situation. Because when you're watching someone get frustrated at like the tiniest thing, you're like, why are you getting frustrated at that? Because you're stood there with like the logical point of view of like, Dude, why are you getting so frustrated at the tiniest thing? But then when you're put in that situation and you're trying to work out this really complicated thing that's supposed to be not complicated and you can't do it, you get frustrated. So that's when you understand the frustration, I reckon. Do you know what I mean? When you're actually in the situation and you don't know until you're in it. The frustration of trying to put something together that looks simple and it's like those instructions. Is it just me when you get given like a pack of something to put together, like a shelf or something? And the, they give you this book lot of instructions and the instructions just don't help. They do not help. Well, they don't help me because I can't even read the instructions. I need instructions on how to read the instructions. <laughs> but yeah. Talking to the fucking thing. I know what I said. I know what I said, okay? You don't need to tell me. I know what I said, yes. I am working on it. I am working on it, all right? Look, look, you think I wanna be this guy? You think I want to be the guy who flips out about the fucking tables? I don't, okay? This isn't who I am, this is who I became, all right? I'm working through the shit. You didn't have to speak, well, you do shit too, okay? You do shit too. Well, I thought you were going to your mother's! That's brutal. I ain't having a temper, man, it's fucking embarrassing. You know? I don't know, I'm sick of women trying to, f every girl I ever date's always trying to fix me. It gets annoying after a while, you know? Like you're not out of your mind with all your fucking shoes. <laughs> right? What is that all about? I'm sick of this hypothetical perfect guy. Go get him. Go down to Applebee's. Let me know what you find. Okay? I've had it. I'm working. I'm trying. You go down and you get this Mr. Even Keeled all the time with his little fucking sport coat, right? You, you live with that guy for a while, you know? Hey, honey, I'm home, how are you? Well, traffic was crazy, almost lost it, but thank God I had that book on tape, right? 
Gulliver's Travels, always a classic, always a classic. That's the guy you want straight across the board, even in the bedroom, right? Always making love to you, missionary style. I love you. Your hair is like an ocean. <laughs> Never know when you like to be flipped over and have your face mushed into the pillows. You fucking psycho, right? <laughs> Nah, she's right. She's always right. I do. I got to work on it. I hate having a temper. You know, I don't know if it's hereditary. I don't know if it's part of the country I'm from. I've always snapped. You know, my dad was like that. My dad's the greatest dude. I yeah, I was just thinking about his little bit with the whole like, do you really want the perfect guy? Also, everyone has a different idea of perfect, I believe. And also, I'm like, not really, because sometimes... You just want someone, like his, him, like when he's always like, you know, I am a bit of an angry guy, like I need to work on it. Maybe, I don't know how angry you are, you know, I don't know what anger problems you have. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't know, that's what gives you character, do you know what I mean? It makes you more fun, you know? Like, imagine if you sat there with your Ikea shelf or your Ikea table and you didn't get a little bit frustrated and you were just sat there like, screw it in, put it together. I feel like, you know... Things are made more fun, like putting together a shelf. Sometimes you need to get angry and that gives you like the energy and the adrenaline to just put it all together. Do you know what I mean? That's what I find. So sometimes your flaws or what you think are flaws can actually benefit you in the long run because you get so angry and frustrated that you just, do, you, you make it out, like you, you build the shelf out of frustration and it actually gets it done quicker, I reckon. Yeah, that's how I'm gonna take it. <laughs> I keep rambling about this one bit, but yeah. From I've always snapped, you know? My dad was like that. My dad's the greatest dude I ever met in my life. And he had a temper. Anytime anything broke in the house, five minutes into fixing it, he was bitching about his marriage. <laughs> it was hilarious. He'd see something broke. Oh, Christ, will you look at that? God damn it, Billy, give me that fucking screwdriver. I swear to God, I don't know what the fuck I ever got married for. <laughs> 13 goddamn years of this shit. Ah, oh, you're a bitch, lady! You've been a bitch for years! Give me the pliers. Yeah, most guys would have left by now. Most guys would have left by now. <laughs> that was one of his catchphrases. Most guys would have left by now, and you don't know how fucking good you got it, lady! <laughs> yeah, when I was a kid, I thought he was nuts. Then I got older, you know, started dating. I realized, eh, this guy's making a lot of good points. <laughs> He's not expressing them in the healthiest of ways. <laughs> I gotta be honest with you, I'm kind of I'm like jealous of the way my dad gets to talk to my mom sometimes. You know, where are all those old school women you can just take your day out on? You know, <laughs> when did they stop making those angels who just knew it had nothing to do with them? They just sit there and let you blow out the lines, right? What a luxury. Right? To fail all day, you come home and download all your insecurities on this other person. <laughs> How was your day? How the fuck was your day? I'm out here making decisions. Take these kids away from me. Give me a goddamn drink. Oh, with the tears. <laughs> <laughs> then the bra burning generation came in, right? Now you get to sit there and listen to their stories all the time. Oh, it's the worst. You know what's the worst is when they're telling you a story and you want to listen, but just what they're talking about, you can't even retain it. <laughs> so I'm supposed to go out to lunch with Jennifer. I'm all ready to do that. I show up, she's there with Susan. She knows I hate Susan. I look like shit. Susan's been going to the gym. I mean, at that point, your head is like a newborn baby. You're trying to... <laughs> you know? You can't, even if you're trying to pay attention. No, but that's the thing. I imagine that's what it's like kind of listening to me for the person. Like, sometimes I can get into a bit of like a ramble where all I do is talk and talk and talk on here and in real life. I just ramble when I'm having a conversation with somebody. So I imagine that's pretty much what it's like for anyone who listens to me. They're just trying to retain the information and they're trying to listen, but it's just kind of hard because I just don't stop. And he's kind of given me that point of view, because I never really saw it from that point of view, but now it's really given me an insight into how the other person feels when they're trying to listen to me or retain anything I'm saying. But yeah. You know, you can't, even if you're trying to pay attention, you can't. <laughs> then you just start staring at their mouth after a while. Like, I can't believe it keeps coming out. This is fucking <laughs> unbelievable. 
He's like, <laughs> starts fading off. <laughs> you start thinking about your own life, right? Why don't I take Nebraska given 28? What the fuck is wrong with me? It's an away game. All of a sudden, her voice goes, <laughs> it goes up, right? And <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, that was a question. <laughs> All right, now what do you do? Can't say yes, you can't say no, you gotta come with something neutral. Hey, what the fuck are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? <laughs> it is what it is, you put one foot in front of the other and uh, you know, halftime adjustments, uh, got nothing. <laughs> no. I don't wanna make my dad out like a psycho, man. My dad's the best dude I know, man, but you know, I, I understand him though. You know, he's like the exact opposite of me. You know, I planned out my life a little more, right? That's why I never got married. Never thought about getting married. It just looked horrific. It looked really difficult. It looked like a lot of them failed. Then if you had a kid, you have that whole weird situation, right? You got this thing that half looks like you, half looks like somebody you used to love and now want to slap the shit out of, right? Kids coming up to the walk, you're like, son, just look to the right a little. Let me just kind of cheat. But dad, I want to look at you. <laughs> <laughs> it's brutal. My dad was the exact opposite. Fell in love, got married, just started having kids. Had five kids by the time he was 33. Pre-Oprah, pre-Dr. Phil, pre-Chicken Soup for the holy fuck. I got five kids. I don't even know who I am yet. It's a pressure of that. Feeding all those kids, man, I'm telling you. Every three, four days, he would just snap. Just snap out of nowhere, you know? Can you pass this all down? You fucking bitch, how the fuck am I gonna make this bullshit? <laughs> Boom, he'd slam the door, have the car in third gear by the time he got it to the end of the driveway. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> My mother would always do the exact same shit. Just lock the door behind him, turn around, look at the kids, and just be like, <laughs> Man, he's just crazy. He's just a crazy person. What is wrong with him? Eight hours later, he'd show up, no apology, she'd have dinner ready. She messed it up, you give her a rough time. Christ, you cooked the shit out of it! <laughs> that reminds me of Shirley Valentine's. I never know Shirley Valentine when she's like talking to the wall and stuff. And she's like, hi wall, yeah. And she like talks about her husband. That literally reminds me of that. But yeah, that was just a random thought, but yeah. Get out of it! <laughs> I don't know. I think I'll be a good dad though. You know? I do. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the end. I actually really like that one. I really like the ones where he's sort of just like rambling off about like just random stuff. Do you know what I mean? Because I just like find it funny. And I just, again, I love how he acts it out. He's just really good at, you know, every single time I watch him, I get a laugh. And that is, that, that's the sign of a good comedian. So yeah, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and please turn on the notification bell. Goodbye.